It's true, many cheap Chinese hi-fi amplifiers may offer a lesser level of build quality or sound quality than more expensive higher-end options, but it is also possible to find good cheap Chinese amplifiers and components that offer excellent value for the price. Like the FX Audio Tube 03 preamp, which I have praised in the past, it's honestly a true unicorn in the market it's in. Chai Fi, as it's often referred to, is mass produced and can be found for low prices due to China's low labor and production costs. With proper research and careful consideration of the features, performance, and specifications, it is possible to find a cheap Chinese amplifier or component that performs well and meets your audio needs. Not the case today, but they are out there. It's essential to keep in mind that the overall quality of a cheap Chinese amplifier will vary, and it is always a good idea to check out reviews like this and do your homework before making a purchase. Some audio enthusiasts may scoff at the $150 price tag of the T3 tube amplifier by Fossi Audio, but for some, $150 is money that could be well spent elsewhere. So when making a purchasing decision, they deserve to know, you deserve to know in your hearts that you're getting the best value for each dollar you spend. Let's dive into the T3 and why I feel you should save your money. I hope everyone is having a fantastic new year so far. Welcome to MyCon Audio, where I cover everything in the realm of hi-fi and beyond. Let's jump right into the T3. So, according to their website, they have been around since 2017 and 2008. Which one? I tried looking up the founder and chief engineer listed on the website and could not find anything on either. I wanted to see if they had any pedigree in the industry or if this is just another off-the-shelf mass-produced OEM company that slaps its logo on generic products. There are many companies like this. I could literally buy a thousand tube amps from these faceless companies, slap mic on audio on them, and sell them as my own. I wouldn't, and I'm not sure if that's the case here, but the lack of information on the company aside from its website is a bit troubling. Their marketing specialist reached out to me and I agreed to review two of their amplifiers, the T3 tube amp, and the TB10D. I am guessing it's the newer version that everyone's swooning over. I haven't even opened it or tested it yet. I was excited about the T3 because I was looking for a small form factor tube amplifier for my new desktop setup. I needed an amp with a reasonable amount of power and a pleasant warm sound with subwoofer output and tone controls. I thought, hey, this is it. M meets all my specifications and features that I really, really want. Thinking back to my Tube 03 by FX Audio, I assumed it would be a comparable experience since I feel most of these products are born from similar facilities. I may have been a bit optimistic. My first impression when opening the box was, was positive. I liked the, how it looks. It has a cool modern style. The knobs are smooth and the unit is sleek. I was not fond of the plastic on top that houses the power supply it just feels a bit cheap. And overall, the amplifier itself is pretty, pretty light. I mean, I could, I could pick it up from the Bluetooth antenna. That's how light it is. On Amazon, it says that it's a class AB tube amplifier in the title and a class D amplifier in the description. So I didn't know what to expect, but I did anticipate a bit more weight. I understand this is a hybrid amplifier, but the description is vague when describing the overall amplifier topology. Now, one thing I liked is that it didn't have one of those janky, cheap power supplies you plug into the wall. It provided an actual power cord that you plug in right here. So that was unexpected and good to see. Aside from the cable, it came with two Russian ECF-80 vacuum tubes. Not the most luxurious of tubes, but hey, if it works, it works. I'm not going to ask for much. <laughs> I wanted to listen to it straight away, so I hooked it up to a pair of older Bowers & Wilkins bookshelf speakers just to take it for a spin. I used Bluetooth to connect it from my phone uh, through my Quobuzz playlist, and away I went. I experimented with the tone controls and was able to adjust the tones. However, I preferred the sound right in the middle. At low volumes, it was okay especially considering the Bluetooth connection. The gain on the volume knob is very sensitive, so it didn't take much to go from a comfortable volume to loud to the sound completely falling apart on me after turning the knob halfway. There was minimal bass, even with the tone control turned all the way up. It just lacked a lot of the low end extension I was expecting. That was my first impression. Okay at low volumes, anything beyond that was questionable. I have never asked my friend Galoosh to help me with an inexpensive product like this because his time is gold and I didn't want to waste it. However, I felt something was not quite right about this amplifier. You know those gut feelings when something is off and you want to make sure that what you're experiencing is backed up by actual facts and science? 
he happily agreed to take a look at it and measure it for me to see exactly what we were working with. Here's what we found. After opening up the bottom panel, we noticed the coupling capacitors are undersized, which could be the reason for the lack of bass and why they only rated this amplifier down to 45 hertz. However, there is little room to go much bigger in the enclosure itself. After a couple of tests, we discovered it can go down to 20 hertz without any major issue. That wasn't the problem though. The problem was everything else. We measured the amplifier to see if it met the specs listed on their website. The website claims it could do 50 watts RMS per channel at four ohms with only 0.1% total harmonic distortion at 80 decibels of signal to noise ratio, which would have been decent had it been able to do that. Had we pushed it that hard, it would have barbecued. So at around 0.1% total harmonic distortion, you're looking at 10 watts per channel with between 56 to 61 decibels of signal to noise ratio. As you can see from the graph, the upper harmonics are consistent throughout the entire frequency range. This is one of the worst measuring amplifiers I have ever seen. At 10 watts, it's at the manufacturer's specs, which is way below how they feel it performs. Five, maybe 10 watts I can possibly forgive, but not the majority of its power. That's false advertising on their part, and I would encourage them to update the website with accurate numbers. We got curious about how nasty the distortion would get, so we pushed it at 24 watts, four ohms, we were at 9.4% total harmonic distortion and negative 20 dB signal to noise ratio. One channel is obviously doing worse than the other, but it's just gross. We pushed it to 30 watts and it shot up like to 40% THD. So it literally cannot do half of what it is rated at without the risk of melting the amp from the inside out. They say anything above 1% total harmonic distortion is actually audible to the human ear. This clearly explains why it fell apart when I turned it up. When we tested it and pushed it, the plastic surrounding the power supply got extremely hot and the amp smelled like it was not enjoying what we were putting it through. These may be 50 watt modules, but the power supply would need to give it proper power to actually test these, this amp's true potential, or it just may be the way it's supposed to be. I don't think companies like this expect people or reviewers to perform a formal product measurement at this price point. This is why I precisely wanted to do a measurement on a product of this price point. Now, for those of you that are going to comment about tubes naturally add distortion to create that warmth that people like from these tube buffers in the input stage, well, it wouldn't add that much distortion. It would keep to the manufacturer's specs perhaps deviate slightly, but not this. Galoosh kept reminding me, Mike, it's only a $150 amp. I get that. And, and had it met its specs and measured and sounded the way Fossey is presenting it, I would have said the price is on par with its measurements. I am a strong proponent of value. And with these measurements and my initial sound test, I don't see any value whatsoever. I am disappointed. I don't hold astronomical expectations from the products I review. I want them to perform how they were presented, at the very minimum. If some of them overdeliver, I am always delighted to tell you about it. I, am, I love it. But this amplifier did not even get close to meeting my expectations sonically or scientifically. I cannot in good conscience recommend this product to anyone. It's dreadful and Fosse needs to reevaluate it immediately. They brag about their technology, sound quality, and superior products throughout their entire website. I hope the TB10D is better because they claim that one can do 600 watts. Right. I wonder if they know that the T3 is just so grossly overhyped on the specs and if they did know and continue to sell them, then shame on them. Look, at the, end, at the end of the day, after I upload this review, I'll have burnt the bridge with this company. I get it. But if this is how they're going to do business, and these are the type of products they're going to tell people is audiophile quality and blatantly lie about their specs, I don't need that in my life. Neither do you. I care about my audience. I care about you guys. That's why I do this. And I'll protect you from disasters like this. Thank you for watching. I, I know it was a huge bummer. I don't enjoy doing reviews like these because I love this business and I love music. And I always want things to work out well. I mean, we all do. Sometimes we have to do what we have to do though. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. With all that said and done, I'll see you guys on the next one.